The year is 2016. A very special moment in history. I was a young man, about 18, off on my own for the first time. And I remember so vividly being in bed at about 2 in the afternoon, stumbling upon a video entitled Why Hitler Was More Evil Than You Think by none other than Jordan Peterson. That's the logical thing to do if you want to win. This started me down a rabbit hole which many other men my age at that time went down. I've moved on from a lot of those things, but there's some mental work to be undone. As I, a 24 year old, I'm trying to rebuild my relationship with politics and reestablish a relationship with the left and left-leaning politics. Now, I'm not talking about being alt-right. I was never alt-right. Never even f***ing came close to being alt-right. I, I think a lot of people aren't. I think the whole alt-right thing was a very different beast than just kind of watching Ben Shapiro and Jordan Peterson. It doesn't mean you were alt-right. It doesn't mean you were a bad person. And it still doesn't mean you're a bad person. I still disagree with Jordan Peterson politically, but I think there's a lot to take away from Jordan Peterson. I think, I think he has a lot of insight into the world. And if we're going to judge every thinker on what they've said or done not being perfectly politically correct, Jean-Paul Sartre and Simone de Beauvoir and Gilles Deleuze all signed a thing to abolish the age of consent in France. So we're gonna have to write a lot of people off if we really want to hold up to that uh, to that standard. As I record this, it's May 2nd, 2022. We really need to repair the relationship between individualists and collectivists, you know, capitalists and socialists. I don't want to say left and right because that's a, those are very loaded terms. I'm talking more about your disposition, your personality type, like what you lean towards. It's not about what ideas you believe in, it's about what drew you to those ideas. That's the differences in people, right? Politics isn't a personality type. And the thing is, I can explain this to you. I can say, oh, you, you, we can't get along. We have to get along. And we all have to get along, okay? But how do we do that? And why do we have to get along? Rationally, why, right? I can say it, but you need reasons for it. I can say fucking anything. I can tell you that bubbly is the best beverage ever created, but I need to give you a few reasons why, right? To repair the fissure between individualist and collectivist types, we first need to understand that these are cultural memes. Okay, so... I can't just drop a loaded ass term like meme without explaining myself here. I'm not talking this kind of meme. I'm talking this kind of meme. A meme is an idea, behavior, or style that spreads by means of imitation from person to person within a culture and often carries symbolic meaning representing a particular phenomenon or theme. A meme acts as a unit for carrying cultural ideas, symbols, or practices that can be transmitted from one mind to another through writing, speech, gestures, rituals, and other imitatable phenomena with a mimic theme. Supporters of the concept regard memes as cultural analogs to genes in that they self-replicate, mutate, and respond to selective pressures. I'll let the version of me in the overpass keep explaining it. Once you understand that they're memes, you have to understand why those memes are valuable. We don't just proliferate things in our culture that aren't valuable. These modes of being aren't completely irrational. Personal experience, right? Me, myself. I'm very individualistic by nature. I don't think that's a flaw. I don't put myself in a hierarchy, individualism being better than collectivism. It's just how I was raised. It's the f environment I grew up in. It's my background. Many people in my family are business owners. Very rational, very academic, very scholarly. And there's other people who aren't like me. And that's fine. There's people who are very socialist. Who don't think about things hyper-rationally. There's one more really important caveat to my thought here that uh, I haven't explained yet. I don't put, and nobody should do this, we shouldn't put rationality and irrationality on a hierarchy. If I say rationality, people tend to assume I'm saying a rationality is worse than rationality. But I think of them on like a horizontal matrix, okay? It's like order and chaos, you need both. Pure rationality has brought us things like ethics and law and order. There's beauty, there's so much structure that comes out of rationality. Pure rationality also brings us things like Stalin's Russia or Nazi Germany. It becomes inhuman, inhuman for the sake of progress almost like a computer. Irrationality, on the other hand, brings us things like art and music and love. Human relationships are irrational and they're corrupt and they're unpredictable in a sense, but they're beautiful, they're raw, they're authentic. I can't rationally explain why I fall in love with people or why I love art. It just is. It just is a thing that is. That's what's beautiful about it. It doesn't need to be explained. But in irrationality, there is no structure. Growth involves death which is a very rational kind of inhuman idea when you think about it. And irrationality kind of paralyzes us into making decisions because if you think about it, you know, everything is kind of like equally beautiful, 
right? Everything's equally good or bad. How the f am I going to pick anything? That's irrational. It's fun, but it's irrational. You need that mix of both to move forward and to have a real society. To look at the world with an empathetic lens, to look at other people as not problems that need to be solved, but as experiences to be had. Rationale builds the physical and psychic structures that we exist in. And irrationality fills those structures with beauty and art and love. For the left to say the right is bad or for the right to say the left is bad, everything falls apart. Everything falls the fuck apart. Like we need both. That's how you move past all the bullshit that you got yourself into a couple years ago. It's there is no us versus them anymore. There's bigger problems to worry about. There's much larger existential threats to worry about that we have to work on together. I appreciate you watching. And uh, I just want to put this out there. I write and read constantly at a cafe called Happy Goat. It's on the corner of Wilrod and Friel in Ottawa. So if you ever see me there, feel free to sit down and join me and write with me and philosophize because I fucking love talking to people. Thank you for watching. I'll see you soon. God bless.